kitty. Wait, go back down. What does that cat look like? It looks like Phoenix. Holy <laughs> shit. Is that porch cat? It looks like It looks Phoenix. exactly like the porch cat that... It's <laughs> the cat that keeps showing up on our porch. <laughs> yes. That is so creepy. That is... Whoa, dude. It left that when door open. I picked open. it up, it was over here. I know why he quit YouTube. Well, I mean, Filthy Frank, why he, why he quit you? Joji's still around. Because the platform moved in a different direction. I mean, YouTube back when... I was thinking he quit for personal reasons. No, uh, he, uh, I mean... It made, uh, like, whenever he actually quit, like... As far as what I heard him say, it sounded like he just wanted to focus on music. No, he did. Well, yeah, and also he got out. Well, he can. He says that, but at the same time, I think he saw the writing on the wall and knew that if you know he'd be kneecapped in terms of the content that he wanted to produce, was used to producing, and everything like that. I mean, he like you, you can't get away with the stuff on YouTube that you used to anymore. Like, by no stretch of the imagination, because I remember iDubs back in the day was, uh, you know, infamous for, you know, saying... His catchphrase was literally two words that you cannot say on YouTube anymore. Y you know the ones I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, exactly. And I remember in those early days, nobody really batted an eye about it. I remember actually Donald Glover, you know, one of the most like prominent voices nowadays of just like people not being able to say anything like that anymore. Basically came out like basically was in the skits back then and was 100% on board with it. But then I guess he just lost he he just you know had a change of character and became who he is now and I'm not going to say Donald Glover is not a talented artist, but the, the dude does think very highly of himself and does basically, um, you know, see himself as a higher shade of artist that basically... It, for instance, whenever they were talking about the show Atlanta, uh, have you seen Atlanta? It's a pretty good show. I'll, I, I'll admit, it's actually really... It's actually pretty pretty interesting uh with its uh with its shifting of uh from comedy to dramatic to you know to just obscure to just flat out surreal uh like the barrier keeps moving and it's done in a way that actually works very well with its characters and with the the world that it's set in but i will say this the level of pretentiousness with Donald Glover, basically, whenever someone said, So, uh, Donald, uh, uh, are you uh, content with just making a television show? Or are you planning on getting into film in the future? And he, li and he looked at the reporter and he says, I'm not making a television show. I'm making an experience. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just a level of pretentious that I'm just like, dude... This is the same guy who would scream like a baby every time LeVar Burton appeared on Community. Yes, I remember Community. I've heard similar answers from artists and other places that just make me be like, ah, they have an ego. <laughs> anyway, here we go. This show has come a long way. It's been quite a while since we began. Hey guys, I'm back. I know that guy, what it do? The Filthy Frank Show. So this is what you guys have been up to, huh? They have a secret. I know they have a secret. I have not been well the last couple months. Long story short, I was born with this, but I was... <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, pink guy. <laughs> Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker. Isn't it interesting to see how many different YouTubers have recently just been like, all right, time to become a rapper. KSI, <laughs> Ricegum, Cody Cohen, Noel, Jake Paul, Sky does Minecraft, I mean. Uh, none of them I've heard have even, like, come close to impressing me as a rapper. 
Especially Jake. Jesus Christ. His stuff is abysmal. I don't typically seek out raps. I listen to it just out of curiosity. And I've heard KSI's, and KSI every now and again has good production, but just the the content of the song is just like, it. there's not much there. And even Rich Brian was a viner before he took a dabble in the music world. Hi right, class, there's no such thing as a stupid question, so just ask me anything, all right? Why do you choose to be a teacher? <laughs> However, few of these rappers have been able to replicate their success on YouTube to their success in the music world. And it makes sense, really. They would have had countless hours invested in their content creation skill comparative to the time spent improving upon their music. Another angle is that it's perhaps the stigma surrounding the fact that they were previously a YouTuber. Steezy Kane mentioned this in a video and I thought it was kind of true. Every single YouTuber who's like made the, that transition it's never usually worked because like they're looked at as a youtuber that's why i don't want to get too big it's not like you're ever going to see pewdiepie in a feature length film because he's always just going to be that guy from youtube and i think there are very few people who listen to eh, it's not music. necessarily true at all no it, well i, I kind of don't agree with any of that well um because i mean jack septicai was on a film well he's well a film yeah but not like a mainstream film no, was it not that mainstream what wasn't it? Free Guy? Yeah, wasn't he in Free Guy? As Jack Septicai. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I guess. That's that's the thing. I didn't know he was playing himself. Yeah. I just knew he was in it. Yeah, he was in it. He was playing him like as Jack Septicai. Mm -hmm. Like him being respected as an actor and being known more for Sean McLaughlin versus being known as Jack I still get comments on that one stupid video. <laughs> like, every now and again, like, <laughs> so it's it's the most liked comment on Jack Septicai's uh, Poppy Playtime Episode 2 video. It's like, I said, Jack, come on now. That's not you. It clearly says in the credits, Sean McLaughlin. And there were so many people in the comments like who were replying down below. Think that it's the same person. <laughs> exactly. Like no shit, Sherlock. That's I'm not joking. Y'all can go look at it. As a matter of fact, I'll have the comment like, I'll... "Hey, post production Nate, put the comment like right here, like so people can see it." And just like the amount of replies down below, and the vast majority of them are just like, "You're stupid." <laughs> this same poison. It's like, it's like I get that you can't read sarcasm That's through text. That's the joke. Yeah, still. Jesus, man. I I think that there are there's room in the mainstream for some for some people. I'd say the I'd say Joji is really hitting it off as a rapper, but do you know who's really hitting it off as a pro wrestler? Mm -hmm. Logan Paul. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would say that. The world needs to just accept that Logan Paul is a great professional wrestler and he and he has not had a bad match. Not one. Against Roman Reigns, against The Miz, against Seth Rollins. I the, had no idea he was even doing that. Yeah, and he's killed it. Every match that he's had, it has been nothing but a success. And I, and dude, even his spot in the Royal, dude, his spot in the Royal Rumble was just unbelievable. Let me, let me show you this. This happened during the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah, Ricochet, literally a, a human with springs for, for calves. I'm convinced, like, his calves aren't real. They're just springs. The man just does not know... Oh! <laughs> ...thinking of him as KSI the music artist. It's always gonna be just KSI the YouTuber. There's not many YouTubers that have been able to supersede the inflexibility of the situation. It's not an easy thing to do, but some people have done it with success. And there's one individual who's done it on a scale like no other. In fact, if anything, Josie. his transition out of YouTube and into music was arguably the greatest success story of any YouTuber attempting to leave the YouTube world. An excellent piece of precedent for any other individual looking to pursue a similar pathway. I'm, of course, talking about the one and only Filthy Frank, aka Joji. So what would you say your main concerns are? Well, what do you want us to fix? And why? But there has to be a reason as to why Filthy Frank left YouTube to pursue an alternate creative endeavor. In Filthy Frank's official statement about why he left comedy to pursue music, he claimed that it was because he no longer enjoyed making the content as well as medical reasons, which he mm. later revealed to be stress-induced seizures. I was recently dying. Oh, okay. So I, I read about that, but I wasn't... But also, you know, this was also around the time where things were sort of cycling out of control with cancellations um, on YouTube. Ironically, uh, it gives me seizures. 
you know, I, this whole time we thought it was so funny doing these fake seizures, and now uh, some call it bad luck, some call it karma, but ironically, uh, boss. Hey, boss. I have a seizure. But I mean, come on, there's got to be something a little bit deeper than that here. Mainly relating to his first point in the statement, I no longer enjoyed why producing he no the longer content. enjoyed making the content. Was it the fact that he had just outgrown his goals, or was it the fact that the adpocalypse totally nuked his revenue and channel views? That, that's what a lot of people are, are aiming towards. Me, I think that's one of the big reasons. Because whenever you have, like, your revenue cut in half, for us, that's a death sentence. For someone like him... That's a wake-up call for you to basically just be like, well, time to seek greener pastures. Perhaps it was and he's big enough to do that. Or maybe even his concern for the politically correct culture that had transformed since he began creating videos. We are going to explore all of these possibilities by taking a deep dive into why Filthy Frank stopped making videos. Feeling stuck, feeling unfulfilled, feeling like you're stuck in a rut. It's an interesting position to be in because sometimes what caused it is often the achievement of something that a while ago you might have dreamed of accomplishing. I've felt it in the YouTube world and I think we've all felt it in multiple different areas. It really can be applied to anything where you have a goal or an aim. When you get 100 subscribers, it's like, whoa, imagine getting 1,000. Then you get 1,000 and it's like, imagine getting 10,000. Then yeah. it's like, imagine getting 100,000, etc. There really is minimal difference upon achieving each goal because all that happens is you just ponder the next higher number. There seems to be this natural propensity for wanting more, thinking that when we do have more, there'll be this golden period where we can just sit back and do sweet bugger all because we've done enough. We've finished enough work, no. or we've got enough subscribers, or we've earned enough money, and that at some point we'll just be content with what we've built. Perhaps there is a point like that. I guess that's what they call retirement. But are you really content at that point? There's always going to be something else to do, something higher to strive for. The only thing you really can do to keep yourself happy is to constantly improve upon your previous self with higher goals, or in Filthy Frank's situation, your previous persona. Look, regardless of whatever all that might mean to you, the underlying principle that I'm trying to outline is that you feel stuck when you've outgrown what you previously previously wanted in life. And the only real way to overcome that is to desire something bigger, something more outrageous than your previous goal. This is a very plausible but also arguable reason for why Filthy Frank might have stopped uploading. Filthy Frank might have felt as though he had outgrown what was possible for him to achieve on YouTube. Now it's plausible because, well, mainly Frank was doing YouTube for an extremely long period of time. He had smashed a lot of goals. I mean, he basically invented the Harlem Shake, one of the greatest memes of 2010. <laughs> he got yeah, I remember when that was originally shared. I was just like, fuck, this is going to go everywhere. And lo and behold. Got 1 million subscribers, then 2 million subscribers, then 5 million subscribers. He was fairly up there on the YouTube hierarchy and might have felt as though trying to push higher was futile and more effort than it was worth. But on the other end, you can argue that there really is no upper limit to what can be achieved on YouTube. There's no end goal because you can always aim higher. There's always going to be someone with more subscribers or views than you. But let me frame it in a slightly different way. Because regardless of whether there is or isn't an upper limit on YouTube achievability, what seems to happen is you hit this point where you kind of realise that you have the influence to successfully pursue other creative endeavors that you might not have previously had the opportunity for. Around the time when Filthy Frank was looking to transition into music, he had an extensive subscriber base, but the Filthy Frank slash Pink Guy meme was going on for a while. It was beginning to become a bit cliche, so he was at a crossroads. He had three different options. Firstly, he could stay with the Filthy Frank meme, but it was slowly becoming a cliche. Secondly, he could change his content and stay on YouTube. Or finally, he could move on to another creative endeavor. Well, the first one is doomed because no matter how great the meme is, it will eventually die at some point. The second option, changing his content, is a possibility, but oh, I mean, Jesus. what else could he really do? What, filthy Frank gaming? That actually sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> anyway, the third yeah. option just seemed most viable, to move on to another creative endeavor. But then that creates another argument. Did Filthy Frank outgrow his YouTube goals or did YouTube outgrow Filthy Frank? Was Filthy Frank kind of at a point where the meme was dying and he actually needed to move on to keep the meme alive without oversaturating it? Well, this was PewDiePie's opinion that he got out right at the perfect time. He wouldn't be able to keep making this kind of content. There's no way. I think he left at a perfect time. And like if he just did this shtick all over and over and over and over, people wouldn't like it either. You, you wouldn't like it either. And this is kind of what Filthy Frank explained himself. In an interview with Vice, he explained that he had felt as though he had achieved everything he could possibly achieve on YouTube. I was under the impression that, you know, that was, that was my, that was my pinnacle. It's your peak. This is my opus. <laughs> this is my opus. Like, I'm yeah, gonna be pink guy and filthy Frank. yelling on the internet, making semi-valid points here and there. You know, I thought that was, 
Like, I was depressed that that was going to be it. Perhaps the sad truth was that Filthy Frank saw that the meme was on the way out. That might be what his peak was, driving the meme as far as it could go without it becoming cliche. October 2016, Filthy Frank's high watermark, his most viewed month on YouTube with a decline following. And I can't shake the <clears> sneaking <throat> suspicion that this had something to do with the adpocalypse. I want to examine the financial motivation from both YouTube and Filthy Frank. Now, while it seems obvious that the primary motivation of Filthy Frank's channel is most certainly not financial, it's still a fact that can't be ignored. After the first adpocalypse, I dare say that a very solid chunk of his channel would have been demonetized Ooh. or put on limited ads. And yeah. again, even if money isn't the primary motivator and only an extra little reward for doing what you love, a drop in revenue is still going to constitute a drop in motivation. Like for example, imagine he's getting paid around 60k a month in ad revenue, which is roughly what his channel would have been pulling at its peak. Then the next month it drops to maybe 5 or 10k, the motivation Ooh. to continue just isn't going to be as prevalent. I love this comment by Dr. Filiger when discussing Filthy Frank leaving YouTube. He wouldn't have gotten monetized anymore. He'd have to start shilling sponsorships and changing his content to fit advertisers, as well as asking for Patreon money or something and his content would have just taken a complete dive if he kept it up. Maybe it already started happening and he saw it coming and that's what pushed him off in the first place. Who knows? But I think he left at a perfect time and will be remembered as a legend. And it's kind of true. Mm. Imagine Filthy Frank having to change to family-friendly content or start advertising Rage Shadow Legends before one of his videos. Oh. But let's ignore the money all together and think about the potential demonetized status of the channel. YouTube claims that videos aren't recommended based on whether they're monetized or not. But I have rock solid evidence from ah, that's of one of my videos. That is bullshit. You know what? It wasn't like that until YouTube started monetizing demonetized videos, but only for them. You see, it was demonetized for you, but not demonetized for them. So, whenever we have a video that's demonetized, you know what I do? I just disable ads. Like, oh, okay, so you're gonna pull this? Alright, no more ads. Period. Yeah, no. Like, why would we be like, alright, we'll put content out so YouTube can make money but not give us any money. Exactly, it's stupid. Yeah, fuck you. Which might suggest otherwise. But I've seen many other content creators talk about their videos being buried after being demonetized as well, so I'm almost certain that the monetization of a video plays a part in the algorithm. Hey, What's tipster! incentive to promote a video if um, they're not, you know, running ads on it? If they're not running ads on it, they can't make money on it, so what incentive should they have to promote it? With this being said, if all of these videos are demonetized, they're gonna say, get... Hey, I, I love Tipster, dude. Tipster, one of the realest uh, news reporters on YouTube, does not get the respect he deserves. Meaning that there'll be more resistance against his growth a compounding effect towards a drop in motivation to continue YouTube. There's another thing worth talking about if we're on the topic of YouTube changes. What about the shift in what was accepted and politically correct on YouTube? What was acceptable in 2013, 2014 and 2015 was unfortunately drastically different in 2017. A lot of it might True. be the fact that people making severely politically incorrect content like Filthy Frank could no longer be monetized, which you might tie into the previous point. I'm in total agreement with Daniela's comment on a Filthy Frank video. People would be so offended if he were to start his channel at this time. This type of comedy is dying off. Going back to Filthy Frank's statement about why he no longer uploaded comedy content, it was mentioned that along with no longer enjoying making the content, he was also suffering from medical conditions hindering his ability to create content. This was discussed in one of Filthy Frank's final videos. But unfortunately, uh, what happens here is a lot of the seizures are actually induced by stress, which unfortunately, uh, comes from a lot of it comes from running this show now i'm not really trying to call him out here because i'm not really sure about the extent of what he was suffering from but if he suffers from stress induced seizures i would imagine that being jokey would be significantly more stressful than filthy frank on youtube but again there are so many Ooh, different not necessarily. Factors here. it depends depends on the kind of like comments the kind of uh, audience you attract because well, and it depends on just where you get your mental peace from yeah True. I mean, it's like if <clears throat> just coming up with songs and recording and you know singing and stuff is like more peaceful for you. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to stress you out. It might be a super stressful thing for some people, but it's not for everybody. Yeah. Also, different things are different for different people. Like, I've heard people who worked at that call center that I tell everybody that was a freaking nightmare for me say that they love that job. Yeah, that's like, true. And I'm just like, I don't understand how you can love that job. Like, also... It's the most stressful job I've ever worked at in my entire life. Also, I miss this era of H3H3. Back when Ethan was actually funny and, you know, not a complete and total dick bag. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to comment on it. Regardless, one of the reasons that Filthy Frank stated to have stopped creating videos was his medical conditions. But 
For Filthy Frank, the medical conditions or simple label of previously being a YouTuber wasn't enough to stop it. He had to go ahead with the transition because he simply felt stuck on YouTube. The downside of being stuck on YouTube far outweighed the downside of being seen as a former YouTuber. In fact, if anything, Becoming Joji might have helped his YouTube channel. He's still very relevant on the platform, getting over 10 million views per month. However, yeah. in doing comedy, he felt jaded. He felt like he had outgrown his gold. He felt as though he had hit his comedic peak and needed to move on to something else. But not only had he outgrown his goals, the entire YouTube landscape was shifting underneath his feet to a system that didn't really benefit his content style. Demonetization and a change in the acceptance of political correctness are two factors that likely led to a drop in motivation and the desire for a new artistic project. Hence the birth of Joji. And then going back to what we said in the beginning about YouTubers struggling to shake off the former YouTube title, Filthy Frank explained that when he was getting close to making the transition into Joji, he had the fear of people seeing him as Filthy Frank the YouTuber rather than Joji the music artist. Is it hard to deal with people who really just see you as Filthy Frank and they just want more Filthy Frank? Back when I was too afraid to make the transition, it was, a, it was a genuine concern. However, one thing that Filthy Frank, aka Joji, has proven is that your past does not equal your future. We have this strange thing where we think that however we're feeling now is going to be how we're feeling forever. But Filthy Frank has proven that wrong. He's shown that if there are things that you don't like about yourself, you can just go ahead and change them. Maybe not overnight, and there may be some leftover mm -hmm. stigma from the change, but it just proves that if there's something you don't like about anything, then you can change it with a bit of effort. Pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to be all for this video, guys. If you guys could like and subscribe, mm -hmm. I'd appreciate the hell out of that. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. So, yeah, the the whole thing with um, with Joji's transition from, you know, from Filthy Frank to Joji is it wasn't a half-hearted commitment. He fully committed to the change. Whereas KSI still wants to be KSI. Mm. He he basically like he, he does he he wants to still be KSI and he wants to make that like KSI into a musical act of its own whereas if Joji would have made Filthy Frank the musical artist, then it wouldn't have worked. Now, I would say another one that sort of worked, um, it was still a novelty, but uh, Your Favorite Martian. I don't know if you ever seen them or not. Uh, how about Ray William Johnson? You know about him? I know the name. Okay, Ray William Johnson had a YouTube channel that had, uh, at one point, 10 million subscribers. Uh, but then... He also had a music project called Your Favorite Martian. And uh, before it got stolen from him by Maker... Uh, yeah, there it is. Your Favorite Martian. Yeah, 3.3 million subscribers. And it still gets... It still gets really good views overall. And uh, yeah, the Stereotype song. Gosh, I remember seeing these and just being... Just... I forget when it was that they finally got the rights to the channel back and they basically they basically were able to start making videos again for it. Here it is right here. So look at the the gap. A 10 year gap between this one here and this one here. Wow. Because Maker Studios stole this from them and basically just tried to tried to like uh, just Hold that as a hostage card against Ray William Johnson because he wouldn't re-sign with them. And then Ray eventually got control of it back. And now, look, 2 million views, 7, 719,000, uh, 380, 400, uh, let's see, there's some here, 4 million, uh, almost 2 million, half a million, 4.7 million, 3.8 million. And it still has, like, great amounts of success, but again... This is something that Ray had to fight for in order to get back. And he still does this and is very successful with it. But his main channel... Uh, oh, yeah. Ray William Johnson. There it is. Oh, he's back. Okay. So he's back doing... Uh, he's got over 14 million... He's got over... Yes, so the whole thing with Ray William Johnson as well is that he had 10 million subs, but then he started falling off. But now it looks like he's back again, and he's already gained, like, four more million subs. That's awesome. I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see uh, some creators that I knew from back when we start, back when, you know, I initially started this thing. Uh, you know, they fell off, but then they had a recovery. 
Same thing with Joji. Let's see. Joji right now has 3.28 million subscribers. Let's see. Filthy Frank. Filthy Frank has almost 8 million subscribers. And he has not posted a video on Filthy Frank in five years. That's the crazy thing. That he keeps getting... <laughs> yeah, he keeps getting massive amounts of views on here. And it's crazy to me. The, that the comedy that, that he had on here that he had on here is still being watched even though it ha he hasn't posted anything in over five years. Like, as uh, as Sunny B 2 pointed out, he's still getting 10 million views a month just off this. Yeah, that old, uh, Chance told me, like, last year that he had gone back and started watching a bunch of his videos again. <laughs> yeah. So, people still watch them. Yeah, and I love it, dude. I love the fact that he's, like, you know, he has this still here, but he's evolved and moved on to other things. It's like, um, as much as I love doing this channel here, I know that this channel will always be associated with reactions. This channel will always be associated with reactions, and that's okay. That is perfectly fine. If this channel does nothing but reactions from here on out, okay, cool. But at the same time, there's other stuff that we're trying to do. For instance, the gaming channel, which is... Very surely nearing uh, 10,000 subscribers, which I'm very happy about. And I want to thank all of you out there for making that a reality. But also, I wanted to, uh, like, you know, Chad as well. Chad passed 31,000 subscribers here recently, and I'm very happy about that. But also, I would like to, like, there's other stuff and other projects that I want to do. And I know that if we post it on here... It, it's gonna be eaten into it'll the it'll probably be algorithm. to our detriment and not our benefit as much as you know it's like oh we have this huge platform to post on but where it's not the same kind of content that we normally post YouTube may see that and just be like uh no you're not going to the algorithm yeah we're not gonna recommend this to anybody and it basically will force us to make an ad campaign through Google that will make it recommended to the people that we want to aim it at which it's going to be SCP related, so I'll probably have to make an ad campaign where I aim it at like the SCP community. There's also members of the SCP community who have reached out to us and have basically told us, yeah, we'll help promote this. Like Sherman, Sherman from Site42, yeah. that, that dude is awesome, and y'all should check him out too. But yeah, uh, the evolution of the platform, the evolution of your you know the YouTubers that you enjoy. I don't think that this channel is our peak, per se, I, in terms of our creativity, because, you know, there's, you know, we have fun doing reactions, but there's other stuff that I know we all want to do. Nick wants to get into making more music again. I want to, he also has a, an awesome gaming idea that we're going to try and uh, figure out how to make a reality. We'll see how it goes. I used to be more creative when I was younger, but a lot of my creativity has kind of flown out the window, so... Well, what... I've I, sort of done better with just giving my opinions on things for the past several years now. Yeah, I hear you, but... Either way, though, Joji is doing his thing, he's living his best life, I can't express anything but happiness and just congratulatory, like, any kind of congratulations to be thrown his way... I'm, I'm extremely happy with, with the fact that he's continued to do what he wants to and what he loves. And if we get no more Filthy Frank, that's fine. That is perfectly fine. But, hey, he made an impact on an entire generation of kids. And, well, for better or worse. <laughs> but... Needless to say, I still kind of hope that one day eventually he might like come back and drop like another video or two. Yeah, like, he doesn't have to start back up. I would say if he like, did, dude, one if, more at some point would be really cool. Imagine if just he out, did like a the three, blue, just uh, like a one. like a three video series on here. He does like a preview uh, of like of like something that he wants to do. You know, like the thing that he's going to release on here, and then it's a three part epic uh, that is just like the. <laughs> The, like the literal closing of the book on Filthy Frank. Yeah. But yeah, that remains to be seen. Anyway, 
Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Check out the original video by Sunny V2, and uh, be sure to check out his channel by clicking his name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.